Hi, I'm CP. Welcome to Bespoke Unit and in this video I'm going to be reviewing L'Envol de Cartier. As per usual, this fragrance review will be conducted using the Bespoke Unit fragrance formula, a quantifiable review matrix that you can use at home. Simply look in the description and you'll find a link which will take you to a guide which teaches you how to use it and also provides you with links to download the blank PDF versions. L'Envol de Cartier was first released in 2016, but you can be forgiven for thinking it's far older given the uh, elegant style of the packaging, which we'll talk about later. The nose behind it was Mathilde Laurent, who is an in-house perfumer for Cartier, but has also worked on creations for Guillaume. This is a woody oriental amber fragrance, an eau de parfum, as I mentioned earlier. And in terms of batch code, I believe this is the batch code, it's the only number I could find, I couldn't find one on the bottle, is 6FCB. So, with that being said, let's jump right in. Click. I love that. Anyway. So I'm going to be using the notes that I've already prepared after sampling this fragrance, but I'm going to walk through them at the same time and compare, compare the notes, see if there's anything I disagree with. Hmm. So the opening of this fragrance is quite interesting. In fact, it slightly reminds me of absinthe, and that's probably because of the wormwood. In fact, it has a rather herbaceous opening of wormwood, some sage, and some lavender, which is uh, quite um, uplifting and uh, quite, it's not invigorating or bracing, it's, it's uplifting, it's comforting. But this really starts to show its true colours in the heart, where it delivers a warm and succulent and embracing honey and guac wood uh, accord. There's a little hint of violet in the heart, which adds a slight hint of uh, floralness, but the honey and the guac wood really dominate this and it's completely, and the violet's completely overshadowed by this. Guagwood has a property that can be compared to pipe tobacco. Um, it's a, a tiny little bit musky. Uh, it also has some leathery uh, characteristics to it. It's a very complex note that's used in a lot of fragrances. And it's probably one of my favorites to be fair. So the guagwood um, will, the, the heart lasts quite a while and the guagwood will endure all the way through to the base and the end and it will be the final remaining scent when you get down to a skin scent. But the honey subsides when you get to the base. It's, it's still warm, it's quite succulent and, 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 and syrupy. But once you're in the base, you then have some patchouli and vetiver and they kind of really take the violet and sort of push it back up. Although it's not gonna be floral, it's gonna be more herbaceous. The uh, patchouli and vetiver are quite earthy and that adds some substance to the guac wood once you get into this very luxurious base. What's particularly interesting about the life cycle of this fragrance is that uh, it has this unusual approach of taking a note that will dominate from the heart and go all the way through the skin scent and then it will evolve slightly as it's affected by other notes on its path but it doesn't go completely in fact it stays there throughout. With regards to the wake and strength though this is where the, for me the fragrance is a tiny little bit of a letdown in the sense that the the longevity is average it's it's okay it performs well but you'll want to top it up if you're wearing it during the day uh, the sillage and projection, they stay quite close to the skin. You're not going to have a very large scent bubble, which is probably why this is very appropriate for certain activities, especially the office, which I'll talk about later. Um, so in that sense, perhaps it's a good thing that it isn't too much of a powerhouse. That being said, it's still present. You do have this wonderful woody aroma emanating from you when you're about uh, six feet away from somebody. Um, perhaps not that far, I'd say my more four or five. So as for uh, its seasonality, this is a fragrance that is going to be very good for the winter months, uh, especially during the fall. It's perfect for that setting, given that it has this very, uh, very warm, uh, syrupy essence that is reminiscent of maybe the dead leaves on the ground, the golden colours in the trees. But it can be certainly very well worn during the winter and spring. Less so during the spring as things start to heat up. In winter it's perhaps not bold enough or has enough balsamic characteristics to really uh, uh, shine during that period. But in any case it's going to be better than the summer. This is where this fragrance is just simply too uh, heavy and doesn't have the right amount of freshness to be wearable during that season. 
When it comes to the third party feedback, people seem to be very much in universal agreement about this fragrance in the sense that for them, it's also a warm, pleasant and embracing fragrance. It's very pleasant. Uh, it's, it's comforting, reassuring, it's elegant. Uh, lots of nice things to be said about the fragrance. It perhaps doesn't have a wow factor. It's not going to be very seductive. Um, it's going to be more popular among older than younger people. In fact, I noticed that younger people, they thought, oh, that's nice. But after that, it wasn't really something that resonated with them. In fact, it was better for people in their 30s or above. Both men and women seem to really appreciate this fragrance. But uh, now, really, I should move on to the impressions, which is where I talk more about this. And so, first of all, is the most appropriate age range for this fragrance. I've put it down as people in their 30s, but I would say that's the starting age. It's perhaps too mature for somebody in their 20s. But men in their 40s, 50s and 60s can certainly all wear this with ease as well. As for the time of day, this is a very versatile fragrance, can be worn all day. It would do just as well during a cold winter's day as a an evening during the fall. As for the uh, usage, uh, the occasion, this is for me a distinctively office fragrance. This is perfect for a professional environment, certainly if you want to have a reassuring and confident uh, and comforting presence, this is something that people will want to be nearby, uh, they're going to enjoy this. And it's certainly not uh, offensive or overbearing by any means. Indeed, this is an often overlooked uh, fragrance that would be a great alternative to, for example, Boss Bottle, which is another very good professional fragrance for men. Um, I think this is a far more elegant and uh, delicate alternative to Boss Bottled, and it's something that if you're if it's a fragrance that you wear that you're starting to get bored of, or you want to try something different, or you feel that too many people wear it, it's a great option to consider. Now, when it comes to the masculinity of this fragrance, this is an overall masculine fragrance, but I'd say it's relatively moderate rather than overly strong. You certainly don't need to be a macho man to wear it. This is something that's quite universal. So now when it comes to the overall presentation, first of all, I like the bot bottle. I like very much this subtle, understated design. You just have Cartier on one side, L'Envol on the other. The bottom is uh, has this sort of um, well, it's convex, but I was going to say concave, but it has this sort of little bubble here. And what's great is the atomizer. There's no cap. You have this null machine finish at the top uh, in what well, I think is plastic, but it's meant to look like metal. Twist it, and there you go. You've got your atomizer. And the atomizer is very good. It provides a nice light mist that is relatively focused. It doesn't spread away too fast, so you're going to be able to uh, apply it uh, precisely. The packaging is simply wonderful. I think it's very elegant. I've used the word elegant a lot in this review and it's for good reason. Indeed, this is quite a distinguished uh, uh, a presentation which suits the fragrance very well. And when it comes to the value of this fragrance, now the RRP is about 85 bucks, but you could pick up 100 milliliters for around 50 bucks, especially if you look online. There are a couple of links in the description below which will uh, give you some decent prices there. Often overlooked by perhaps louder and brasher peers, L'Envol de Cartier is wonderfully elegant and it's a great understated fragrance that exudes a confident masculinity. It's ideal for both the office and date wear. In fact, that's something I didn't mention earlier in impressions, but this would be great for a romantic occasion. It's a safe, safe choice. It's not going to be overbearing in any way and it's going to be seductive in a kind of reassuring way. It's a perfect choice for a professional man who seeks to distinguish himself. That's all for me today. I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you have, please subscribe and we'll see you in the next ones. Otherwise, head to bespoken.com and check out all the other subjects that we do. There may be something that will interest you. Until next time, take care.